Good morning and welcome to this edition of our YouTube channel, Pain Free Partha. Today's topic is about diastolic dysfunction and anesthetic implications. First of all, I wish to declare that I am not a cardiac anesthesiologist and I am not a very frequent practitioner of a lot of cardiac cases. So, whenever I say something on academics, I put a big salute to the legendary teacher of centuries, Dr. Ravi Shankar. So, whenever a film gets hit, you know, we are worried about this person. Who is that person? Yes, the outcome is there. But sometimes, you have outcomes because of these people also. So, that is what is important. We are thinking in terms of systole. We are in thinking in terms of ejection fraction. But sometimes the outcome is decided by diastole also. What is the problem now? Diastolic dysfunction. The LV does not relax properly. It doesn't relax properly. It gets stiff. When you get stiff LV, the filling of blood is a little slow and there is an increased pressure. Okay. So, this stiff LV, so pressure rises with filling. Less than 12 filling pressures may become 60. It also needs an atrial kick or atrial systole to fulfill its filling. This is what is the major problem. Now, the incidence is about from 2.5 to 25 percent. We can see many of the people of 65 plus past may have this diastolic dysfunction. What are the causes? Hypertension, aortic stenosis, ischemic heart disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathies, diabetes mellitus. These are diabetes, hypertension, AS. Very common, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, when you are apneic about this cause, what you call as sleep apnea, whenever we get diastolic dysfunction, go into the history of sleep apnea. That is very important. Why we should know this? Now, we know the incidence. What is it? The basic pathology. What are all the causes? Hypertension, AS, diabetes, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and all. Now, why should we know about this diastolic dysfunction? In the absence of systolic dysfunction, your function of the systole is fine. It is an independent predictor of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. This decides that this fellow has got some problems. This fellow will land up in flash pulmonary edema in the next two years. This is an independent predictor. It has the potential to proceed to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or normal HEF. That is what is called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or heart failure with normal EF. Now, what is special in this? Diastole. There are two things. The diastole starts actually in systole. The relaxation starts here only. At a mitochondrial level. This is an important thing. And relaxation itself needs energy. These are the two things which why diastolic dysfunction, relaxation and all. But there are two things in this. Relaxation itself starts in systole and relaxation itself is an active process and it needs energy. Now again I am telling you this is the pressure and this is the volume. This dark line is the normal thing. So when the LV gets stiff because of the diastolic dysfunction, Volume rises, the pressure rises high. This is what we call reduced compliance or stiffness. The pressure rise is high with a similar volume rise. Now you have here, there is a stiff wall. If you want to push here, the filling pressures are high. The LV chamber stiffness is high and it needs an atrial systole to fulfill. What are the Symptoms. Now we know what is the basic pathophysiology. We will go back again. Now we know this is the LA cannot press. It needs a HL system. 
LV is decreased filling, so there is a decreased aortic outflow. This is forward symptoms. Patient can experience fatigue. But here, if the LV goes up, it dilates, it atrial fibrillation, back pressure, pulmonary congestion goes back. This is backward. But what is very common is an unexplained dyspnea in a setting of a disease. Now, we have an hypertension, we have a diabetes, and this patient has an unexplained dyspnea. EF is normal, everything is normal. This leads to a diagnosis of diastolic dysfunction. Now, we know what are the clinical features. The commonest clinical feature is unexplained dyspnea in a setting of a disease. Other things can come. Forward output is decreased, then you have fatigue. Backward pressure is increased, we have pulmonary congestion and edema like features. These are all the clinical features. Now we go to ECG. The ECG may have this thump sign in the ST segment. They can have LA dilatation, they can have AF also, but this is the classical sign of diastolic dysfunction. Now we go to echo findings and gradings. Now we are concentrating on flow velocity across the mitral valve because this tells about the stiffness of the LV, how much it feels, how much it needs the velocity. This is being told indirectly tells the LV function in diastole. Now the flow velocity during the normal early diastole is called E. When you have atrial systole, the atrial velocity is called A. Normally, E by A is more than 1. That means the ventricle fills up even before atrial systole very well. Atrial systole is contributes minimal. But in case of in case of this is what is called normal you can see e by a is more than 1 1.01 you can also see is there the mitral flow velocity this is e this is around 65 centimeter per second or something like that now you can see here e by a it is 0.8 that means it is grade 1 lv systolic function now you can see the slash exactly at the mitral valve inflow s so as uh, slowly it becomes pseudo normal like uh, L, e by e by a may be normal then it goes to restrictive means that's completely atrial pressures are very high this is what is the grade normally it is one goes it to 0.8 slowly 0.8 becomes 2 and 2.2 .2 means Completely the LA is gone. Now we know E. What is the E? The flow velocity across the mitral valve in early diastole. What is A? Flow velocity across the mitral valve in atrial systole that lays diastole. Now what is E dash or E prime? A dash or A prime? These values are similar to A and V, but they are formed from tissue Doppler image where the annulus is there. That means in the echo where the ventricle and atrium just tips, contracts, contacts each other. There you keep the slash. Then you can see go to tissue Doppler. In the echo there is TDI. After you put the color Doppler and keep it like this and go to tissue Doppler left side and click, then it will tell the E prime and A prime. Now we can also, this is about the annulus. Now we can also keep in the septum the slash and see what is E prime on septum. And you can also see the Valsalva manual. There should be ratio reduction of more than 50% to say severe dystolic disorder. Now, where are you keeping the slash? If the slash is here, it is E and A. If the slash is here, it is E dash and A dash. If the slash is in the septum, septal E prime, lateral E prime. This is what is tissue Doppler imaging. 
monitor can also show the volume of LE. Normally, it is less than 20 ml per meter square of body surface area. Understand? It is body surface area. Now, the monitor will show by area length method or simp method in the right side, left side. Now, we go into E by E dash is more than 14. Septal E dash means what? Flow velocity by tissue Doppler imaging if you keep the slash in the septum. So that is less than 7 cm per second. Lateral is less than 10. The tricuspid velocity normally it is below 2.6. Now it is more than 2.8. LA volume index we have already told less than 20 ml. If it is more than 34 ml per meter square of body surface area. All these things point out to a severe diastolic dysfunction. Septal E dash is less than 7. Lateral E dash is less than 10. This is how we diagnose and grade diastolic dysfunction. Now we will go to the management of it. Weight reduction. Treatment of hypertension. Regular physical activity. OSAS correction. These are all some of the non-pharmacological methods of the we can have AC inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, thiazides, ranulosine, and calcium channel blockers. See, these calcium channel blockers have many minimal role, minimal role in systolic heart failure. It's normally happening. But in diastolic dysfunction induced heart failure, that is heart failure with preserved EF, they have some values. All routine investigations, electrolytes. Anemia. See, because sometimes this unexplained dyspnea, that is what is our prime symptom, may be due to a hemoglobin decrease. So, pick up the hemoglobin to 12 or 30. NT pro BNP levels. This may tell some amount of myocardial damage. What are the anesthesia concerns? There are certain questions we need to ask. Was there a diastolic failure here? What is a person's exercise tolerance? Is there hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and renal damage? Clinical signs of edema, increased JFP, that means right side failure. Is there any cardiomegaly on exam? Then all this means this patient is at increased risk. So diastolic failure. Person's exercise tolerance, elderly female, hypertension, diabetes, renal damage. This is very important. Diastolic dysfunction and CKD. Signs of edema, irregular pulse. You see, irregular pulse means atrium has dilated. It has gone into fibrillation. Now, what are the aims and goals? You have to maintain rhythm. That's what I have already told. Because atrial, atrial fibrillation means gone. Because we need atrial systole to push in the blood into the ventricle which is stiff. So, LV filling is decreased. All these things will problematic. So, you have to maintain the rhythm. Number two is optimize preload because already the LV filling is less. Here if you have less, nothing will come here. So, that is answer. Maintain heart rate because if the heart rate is very high, then your diastolic time is high. The low then you have problems here. If the diastole is strength. So, severe DD, inotropes, diuretics and judicious fluidus. Otherwise, preload, little excess can be okay. But if you have other problems, backward symptoms, pulmonary congestion, you should use judicious fluids. Myocardial ischemic changes, is tachycardia, hypotension, hypertension, hypoxia. Hypertension, any sudden increase in the afterload. See, sudden increase in afterload, nothing. Diastolic time is decreased in tachycardia. Afterload had to be taken care of. So, all these things are needed. Now, pre-medication. We need to have adequate anxiolysis because anxiety itself will cause tachycardia and cause confusion. Nerve blocks, yes, okay. Minimal chemodynamic changes, not major problems. Neuraxial blockades, opioids, Segmental epidural, sequential, or better. Good preload. Maintain afterload with phenylephrine shots. 
rule of 70, group of age of 70, pulse rate of 70, map of more than 70, less than pulse pressure 70. So what do we do? This is very important. 70, pulse 70, map 70. Age is 70, map 70, pulse 70, pulse pressure should be less than 70. Usually what we do is give opioids, medicine, wait for some time, 2-3 minutes. Then you use propofol. Then your dose of propofol will be less. So your afterload reduction will be less. Grade 3 for major cases. Grade 3 diastolic dysfunction. Major cases. Yes, we need invasive monitoring. PE is ideal to know the vascular status. Central lines, yes, they may not give ideal preload, but the central lines may be useful for your inotrops. Urine output, temperature, ECG priorities. Urine output is very important. But keep the pulse on the dorsal disparities. You are sure that there is some output. Halothane, nitrous oxide, ketamine, doubtful diastolic impairment. So nice that you should use preferably air oxygen agent, no ketamine. So urine output is very ideal clinical monitor of cardiac output. Goal directed optimal. If backward symptoms are not there, then prefer erring on the higher side with regard to fluids. Multimodal patient specific analgesia. Have coughing under the tube, finish after load rise, BP rise, all these things we don't want. IV, in, already we are in a state of what we don't know. Some infusions are going on, we don't know the ideal preload. Now, at the time of extubation, if we have a sudden surge in catecholamines, we may land up in pulmonary edema. So, smooth extubation is a must. So, if you have landed up in a patient with failure where the EF is normal, then again you give oxygen, CPAP, diuretics, dobutamine, levosimendan, melrino. These are all some of the leucotropic effects. Inotropy means contraction. Leucotropy means better relaxation. Inotropy, chronotropy means rate. Dromotropy means conduction better. Inotropy means contraction. Leucotropy means Better relaxation. Now, preoperatively, we think of exercise tolerance. Are there any clinical signs? What is the severity on echo? What are the drugs he has on? Was there any comorbid conditions like CKD? What are the investigations he has taken? Now, we go to the surgery type. What is the level of severity of diastolic dysfunction? What is the surgery type? That decides on what monitors have to be used. Intraoperatively, maintain rhythm. Preload error on the higher side, heart rate 70, no ischemia, no hypertension. Nerve blocks are okay. If you go into centenary axis block, sequential spinal, segmental spinal, segmental epidural, and opioid additions, all these things, techniques are used for decreasing the hemodynamic disturbance associated with centenary axis blockage. If G is smooth induction and smooth extubation, multimodal analgesia, rule of 70, no shivering, very important, no hypoxia, post -op. smooth induction, leucotropic drugs and CPAP. So thank you. Who knows the diastolic function? Now she's the kit and she may be the kit in the next decade. Thank you.